All right, I'm Oz Dusale from Portland, Oregon. I'm Excel on Fire, and I'm gonna show you Flash Field. I'm Linda Tracy from My Online Training Hub, and I'm gonna show you how to select all objects. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. I'm not gonna unwind data, I'm gonna wind the data back up. I'm Frederick Le Guin from France, and I'm going to show you how to avoid to merge cell. I'm Gwen Hopkins from Access Analytic in Perth, Western Australia, and I'm going to show you how to turn slices into tabs. More people need to know about Flash Fill because it can help you out when you've got a list of names like this that you need to modify. From this list, we only want the last name, comma, first name. We don't want the governor or GOV with Lisa Newton. We just want Newton, comma, Lisa. We want Mills, comma, Samuel. I'm going to have to train Flashfield by giving it a few examples and then see if it can get our pattern. Let's give it a shot. Highlight the entire column. Flash fill. It didn't get everybody and it's got the GOV in Gov, so I'm going to undo and give it a few more examples. Let's try this again. Conane Dancy, Simon Gitta, Sherlene Navarro. We got what we wanted. Flash fill. Hi, I'm Minda Tracy from my online training hub. Working with objects like charts and shapes can be tedious, so I'm going to show you some ways you can easily select all objects or select objects with a left click and drag of your mouse. Before we start, I should point out that objects are anything that floats on top of the grid. Things like charts, shapes, form controls, smart art, slices and images are all objects. In fact, most things you find on the inset tab of the ribbon are objects. So here I've got some charts and I'd like to resize them. I want to make sure they're all identical and I want to do it in one step. So I'm going to select the outer edge of the north chart. Be sure not to click in the middle, you just want the outer edge. And then shortcut key Control A selects all objects. We can tell they're selected because they all have the pull handles visible. Now all I need to do is go to the Format tab and change the size, press Enter, and they've all been resized in one go. If I want to deselect one of the charts, I can hold the Control key and left click the chart. And to reselect it, hold Control and left click again. Now while Control A is one of my favorite shortcuts, sometimes I have sheets with lots of objects and I only want to select a few. Here I've got two images. Well, it looks like two images, but if I open the selection pane, you'll see that there's actually eight objects here that make up these two images, one for Excel and one for Word. And ideally, I want them grouped into one object for Excel and one for Word. But trying to select them all when they overlap one another is tricky. I could use the selection pane and click on the object's name in the selection list, hold down control and select them. But you can see I've actually got them out of order because I have some from Excel and one from Word selected. I could rename the object names, double click and give it a new name, but that's a lot of work. It's much easier to lasso them with my mouse. So we can go to the Home tab and in Find and Select, I can turn on Select Objects. Now my mouse has changed functionality. I can left click and drag and lasso the objects. And now you can see they're all selected. We can see in the selection pane which objects make up this one image. And I can go and format them in a group. This gives them a group in the selection pane. And now I can select them as one object on the worksheet. At the moment, my mouse is still set to select objects. And so the functionality of it's changed. I can't actually select any cells. And if we go to the Home tab, you'll see a lot of the buttons are grayed out. So let's turn Select Objects off. Now my mouse is back to normal. 
and I can select this as one object and move it around as one. Well, that wraps up my tip. I hope you find it useful. All right, hey, this is Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel, and my problem today, I have this list of 173 words, and I want to I want to be able to pick from this list, but boy, it is a real pain to page down, page down, page down, page down, and I'm probably going to start just picking lists, words from the top of the list all the time. It's going to get real boring, so check this out. Equals sort by, equals sort by. Now, this is one of those brand new dynamic array functions that's in Office Insiders right now. So here's my array. I'm going to choose A2 on down, comma, and then what am I going to sort by? Well, there's 173 items there. So I'm going to ask for rand array of 173. Press enter, and every time I press F9, I get a different sort of that, which is awesome. But I still have to page down, page down, page down. It doesn't solve any problems at all. All right, so now check this out. I want to wind this data up into a rectangle. Equal index. Index. What do I want? I want this array over here. And check out this new nomenclature, C2 hashtag. That says all the results from that formula in C2. And I'm going to ask for the sequence, the sequence. And I'm going to do, let's say, uh, uh, 18 rows by 10 columns. That'll get me uh, just a little bit too many. Uh, that's OK. We'll have a few reference errors at the end. You see, every time I press F9, it's all in a beautiful little rectangle there in my view. And I get a different uh, set of top words that I can choose from each time. Merge cell is a tool that everybody knows in Excel. You just have to select one cell and extend the selection, and when you apply Merge and Center, the content of your cell is here between B and E, and here, just with two colors, Merge and Center, it works. But there is some bad side effect, like for instance, if I want to move the content of this cell like this, I can't. Also, if I want to select only the colon E, here it works, but when I reach the merging cell, automatically I select the four colon, and that's not good. Again, if I want to copy paste with two different sizes of merging cell, I can't. But there is an option in Excel where you can do exactly the same presentation, that means to write across different colon, but without having this problem. I show you. Let's restart from the beginning. If I want to copy the content of July between B and E, I select my range of cells here, and I go here in the Format Cell option, and I select this option, Center Across Selection. So you can see that now I have the value July written between B and E, and if I extend the size, it works. Also now, if I select only the colon E, I don't select the colon B, C, and D. And here, I do the same again. So now, if I copy over my selection, I don't have the previous message. So have you seen? It's very easy. So now, please, because you know the tip, don't use merge cell, but center across selection. So I'm going to show you how you add slices to tables in order to filter that table and make those slices look like tabs. So this table is filtered by females and ACT, but I can easily change that now to males in my gender column and maybe NT for Northern Territory in my State and Territories column. So I've also, um, in another video later on, I will show you how I've added these cards that change as well and add a number of people as being displayed in a filtered table. But that's for another time. Here's how I did this. So I've started with a plain set of data. I've pressed Control T to turn it into a table. And this is now a properly formatted Excel table with lots of extra functionality. And all I need to do is go to the Design tab in the top right corner. 
and that appears whenever you click on a table and insert a slicer and then I get to choose which headings which column headings I want to be able to filter and slice by so gender and state and here they are the two slicers and now it's a case of formatting these so while I click on the slicer I get an options tool and I'm going to change that that slicer to two columns and I'm also going to get rid of the heading by unticking display header and now I'll just resize this and I'll also duplicate an existing format and just change it to what I want it to look like so I like a slicer without any borders so I'm going to say borders none and then I can apply that slicer format to my slicer just move this up to the top right hand corner and I'm also going to just make the buttons a bit bigger for this first tab so just change the height there uh, let's turn off the grid lines to make it look a bit neater okay I'll just insert a column as well now for the state slicer I need to turn this into more columns so I go options and change this to 8 and I can now move this across apply the same sort of formatting and also get rid of the headings by turning off the display header resize it and by dragging up from the bottom you can turn them into tabs see how the bottom looks straight so that's the little trick and now these slices filter the underlying table and they look like tabs now one thing I can do is actually lock these slices down so people don't accidentally move them so it's a right click size and properties positioned and layout and then disable resizing and moving there's now a black border around the outside when you click away that border disappears but it just says that you can't drag that slicer out of the way and I'll just repeat that for the second slicer you see how the box appears and that's slices as tabs for tables to add a card visual to your report then you need to actually write a formula to start with so for example if I want to know how many people there are when it's filtered count a doesn't do it because when you filter the figure doesn't change what you need to use is aggregate so aggregate 3 is count a and the beauty of aggregate is you can ignore hidden rows and that's what you need for a filtered table so 3 comma 1 highlight the column doesn't really matter which column it is I'll just do the gender column so there's 1959 males 1227 females then we need to add a shape so draw a shape doesn't really matter what shape it is up to you and then in the formula bar while that shape is selected just equals a particular cell with a value in and you can see that value is now inside that shape so I've centered it you can make it bigger you can bold it etc you can always add some drop shadow so shape fill uh, white shape effects shadow shadow of your choice and then as you change your slicer your number changes and therefore your card visual changes as well and that's how you add a number into a card visual in Excel Okay, so we hope this video helps you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.